given f of x equals negative 3x squared plus x and g of x equals 5, find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, and then determine the domain of each function in interval notation. So you need to know what your notation looks like. There's two ways of seeing your notation. So for the first one, f plus g of x, which is, um, I'm putting x here because both of these have x inputs. This is the same thing as saying f of x plus g of x, as per what is stated in our addition function. That, I think, is easier to memorize than memorizing these. So just know that you could always convert to the other ones, and you'll see that I'm going to do that. It just makes it easier to look at. Okay, so now since we have this for the first one, all I got to do is plug in what f of x is, plug in what g of x is, and add the two together. So let's go. f of x was negative 3x squared plus x. So negative 3x squared plus x. And now I'm going to pull in plus the other one, right? g of x, which was just 5. Boop. Now, when you're doing your domain, always look at the one that you initially wrote. So I'm going to use that for my domain, you know, after we simplify. But now you just try to simplify. But there's nothing that you can simplify here because there's no like terms. So your f plus g of x is negative 3x squared plus x plus 5. And that's your answer. That's the new function that you get when you add the f and g functions together. Now let's do the domain. Now, if you have trouble with understanding domain, we have a whole big domain playlist already on the channel for you guys. So if you really want more in-depth help, go back to that playlist. It's on our homepage. Um, this one's going to be kind of like quickly explained because we already did domain depth in that playlist. The only thing you really have to know is if we're using parentheses for interval notation for a domain, we need to exclude numbers or theory values like uh, infinities. And then if you're using brackets, you are including that value. Now, when you are excluding and basically when you're looking for a value in which you cannot use, because that's how you basically get to the domain, you basically only think of fractions and square roots or, you know, cube roots or stuff like that. But here, this is just all in the numerator, right? This is all over one. There's no number that I can plug in to these x values to make this function not work out. I could put positive numbers, I could put negative numbers. So there's no exclusions here. So the domain in interval notation would be from negative infinity, meaning I can include all negative numbers all the way up until infinity, all the way to positive infinity. This is just a fancy way of saying there are no exclusions. And since infinity is a theoretical concept, I have to exclude it because it is not an actual value. So I will use parentheses here. And that is my domain for this one. Pretty simple, huh? Let's go to the next one. F minus G of X. Well, this is the same thing as saying F of X minus G of X. So now all I got to do is plug in f of x, then plug in g of x, and subtract them to one another. So let's go. f of x was negative 3x squared plus x minus, now I'm going to put g of x in parentheses. Usually I'll do that, but this one is just a 5. So this one is easy. But usually if you had more values, like if this was like, you know, 5x plus... 2, you would have to distribute the negative. But in this case, since it's just a 5, it doesn't really matter. This is what you're going to use for your domain. Now let's try to clean it up. But we can't really, we can't really simplify this because there's no like terms. So f minus g of x equals negative 3x squared 
plus x minus 5. That's the end for the first part. And now let's do the domain. So once again, you think of those exclusions, but this is all in a numerator. This is all over 1. So numerators really have no exclusions. I could plug in any number for x values, and I would get an actual number out. Uh, no numbers you know, do not work for this. So it would be the same domain as before. Negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. And I use parentheses and not brackets because infinity is a theoretical concept. It doesn't actually exist. So I have to exclude it. And that's it. So that's the domain for this one. Okay, halfway there. Well, we're halfway there. Okay, ah, oh, sorry. Okay, this one, f, f times g. So this is f times g of x. But I like to write it as the other thing because it just makes it look easier. This is just f of x times g of x. I'm multiplying the two functions together. So, well, what was f of x? f of x was negative 3x squared plus x, and I'll put this in parentheses because I like to visualize and see everything together. And I'm going to multiply this by g of x. g of x was 5, so times by 5. Both of these terms have to be multiplied by this 5. So, this term has to be multiplied by 5. This term has to be multiplied by 5. But remember, before you simplify and do all that stuff, um, you want to hold the first thing that you write for your domain, because sometimes they try to trick you up. Always go back to the first one that you write. But now let's see if I can um, simplify. So we have f times g of x equals negative 15x squared. That's the negative 3x squared times 5. And then I have plus... 5x. Now, if you want to simplify this even further, you can pull out 5s and x's. I will do that quickly for you. So I can say uh, I could pull out a 5, and this would be negative 3x. Actually, I could pull out a 5x, and this would be negative 3x plus 1, and you would get the same thing. So either one, um, should be acceptable. This one is just the more simplified version. And now let's do the domain. So once again, always go back to the first one that you have just in case, because once you start canceling out stuff, that's when the domains get a little wonky. But here, this is still all in the numerator. It's all over one. There's really no exclusions. I could plug in any value for the x's and I would still get a real number out. So just like before, parentheses, Negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. There are no exclusions, so this is your domain. Now for the next one, speaking of domain, I see that I have to divide by the g function. Once you are dividing by something, you're probably going to have exclusion values for your domain. So let's just keep that in mind as we go further. So division is basically the same thing as saying f of x, because f was on top, divided by the g of x, because that one is on the bottom. So all I got to do is plug in what my f of x was, was on the top. f of x was negative 3x squared plus x, and that's all over the g of x. g of x was just 5. Okay, so put a star there, because when we do the domain... That's the one that we're going to be working with. Don't work with domain for simplified stuff, especially when you start canceling out. Now let's see if I can clean this up and simplify it. Let's see, I can simplify the top by pulling out an x value. So I could make the top be equal to, I could pull out an x, and then it'd be negative 3x plus 1 all over 5. Now let's see. Numerators, there's no exclusions for your domain, right? I could plug in any number and this value would work. And there is no x value in the denominator, right? This wasn't like 5 minus x. If there was, then you would have exclusions. But this is just a number. So there's still no exclusions. I think there was another question like this and where there was exclusions. So just go to those just to see. But for this one... Your domain is, once again, negative infinity 
all the way to positive infinity. Uh, there's no numbers in which uh, the fraction wouldn't work. You could plug in any value. All right, and that's the end. So this is the new function once everything was divided, and this is the domain for the last part. But that's it. What do you think, guys? This one was a lot of fun. Um, I had fun. Hopefully you did too. If this video helped you, please let me know in the comments. I love to hear from you guys. Subscribe to us if you want to hear more of my voice. <laughs> I know it's a lovely voice. Um, but yeah, but if you want to learn more for us, click subscribe. We've got tons more videos coming your way. And we thank you so much for the support. We'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Have an awesome day.